Am I oh, sideways? Yeah. Uh, you are sideways. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to turn your head sideways so I can talk to you. <laughs> Joining me now is the Monty Pittman. What an honor this is. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, I Thanks for having should, me. Oh, of course. Anytime. I figure we should start off with this. I know you do guitar lessons. Uh, I'm 100% certain that you're a phenomenal teacher as you are a guitarist. Thank you. I would probably be the worst student you've ever had. No, no, no. Not, not, if, you, not if you take lessons from me. No. <laughs> I'm pretty bad, though. You would be, you will be, um, you will, you will amaze everyone that you know at your uh, guitar shredding skills after, after uh, taking lessons with me. See, before COVID and all that, uh, here in St. Louis, I started taking guitar lessons because I tried really? doing it myself. I tried um, watching some videos on YouTube and I just wasn't getting the understanding of it. So I wanted to have an instructor and I went there till COVID, uh, you know, pretty much put an end to it, which is maybe two months or so. And I was pretty horrific, but I learned one or two songs. Yeah, see, I, I think you, you should build from the ground up. Uh, you, you have a, a window of opportunity when you first start playing, or when you first get a guitar, mm -hmm. where it's new to you, and you, you, know, you, you want to figure out how it works. And a lot of people will spend all their time just learning a song. Mm -hmm. And after you've you know, you've spent that time and you learn a song or two songs, sometimes people will get bored with it. So it's good to learn just other, uh, just the way that the guitar works. So you just, under, you have a full understanding of it. Um, so a little bit of scales, a little bit of chords, and then, you know, just slow, after you, after you do that, then you're, after you learn you know, the chords in a key and just the basic chords in a key, then, you're going to find so many songs that have those same chords. So you're not spending your time learning one or two songs. There's hundreds of songs you could play. That's, that's one of the issues that you could have with YouTube. Like, and what's great about YouTube is you have so much information out there. But then on the other side of it, you know, you don't have someone helping you through it. Yeah. So you could, uh, if you develop bad habits, that can be a real problem later on because you're, you're used to using certain fingers and it's hard to break that habit that you've, that you've started. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, talking about you, when you first started playing, you were 13 years old. Was being a musician yeah. something that you kind of always wanted to do, wanted to be? Yeah, that's all I've ever wanted to do um, since, since, I was, since I can remember. I know since I was three, there's photos of me you know, uh, dressed up, you know, um, and, you know, had, I had like toy guitars. So when I finally got a, my first guitar, I understood how it worked. You know, I know that you could just push your finger down and at least get some sounds and make a melody that way. Mm -hmm. Practice is obviously essential, but you felt like it did come very naturally to you. It did, yeah, because I wanted to do it so badly. That's all I thought about. I mean, I, I never, you know, and I, now looking back, I wish I would have had some other um, thing that I pursued, sort of a, like what they say to fall back on. Mm -hmm. But also, I, you know, I would have, I would have gravitated to that at one point. Why is which, that? Um, because with music, everything goes in cycles from the way that the note, go, the, the way that the notes actually work to the styles and if you um you know there, there could be times where it, it it's uh doesn't seem like a great time to be a musician i may have gone and and done something else and then you can kind of abandon it right. to me that's part of the the beauty of it is you know when that cycle comes around like you've learned so much and you appreciate it more of course, of course. Every action. But yeah, that's all I wanted today. to do is, is be a musician. Yeah. yeah. You know what I probably could beat you at? I'm pretty sure air guitar. I know if there are tournaments for that. I am like fairly certain that I would win however much money. Uh, uh, I mean, like. I'd, I'd, let, I'd let you have that one. I'd let, you, I'd, let you, I'd let you win that one. Are there actually or, tournaments for air guitar? I, I, I don't know. Oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> or uh, uh, like Guitar Hero, those, the games, you know. Yeah, because I would play those, 
and it's like uh, you know like i was i would lose I'm like no way you're wrong <laughs> i'm right that's the way it goes oh, i've not played guitar hero in such a long time but i did have a lot i know of fun i'm that. talking about something that doesn't even like i don't even know if that still exists i'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it does well before <laughs> we talk about madonna i think oh. I, I i think i came across in research about you that you were in a band with adam lambert yeah we played together before he was on american idol huh that is to me it's see and i'm not really a part of the music world besides interviewing musicians but i feel like it's such a small world you know it is yeah well that came from uh i used to do the there used to be these shows uh it started out it was called club makeup and it was the first saturday i think yeah i think it was either the first saturday or last saturday one saturday of each month at the El Rey Theater and it would be different musicians from different bands and, and they would they would play the whole set and then there would be all these different singers and the singers were from a you know theater background and it, and it was very uh, it, there would be a theme mm -hmm. like um, Prince night everybody dressed like even the crowd everybody dresses up like it's purple rain and from some, some of the best singers you can imagine. And um, a couple of them, I, I said, hey, you know, I want to start a band. Can you recommend, like, surely you know some other singers. Like, who's somebody you'd recommend? Who's the best that you know? And they recommended Adam. And then some mutual friends introduced us. And we started playing together. And we didn't get to do, we, uh, we would write a lot over the internet like i would come up with some riffs and send them to him he'd come up with some vocal ideas we played some shows but uh it, it was hard because i would go on tour with madonna he was in wicked and so he would travel for that and then tommy victor from prong was playing bass and he was also in ministry and danzig so we were all in different play it was rare that we were in the same city at the same time and then he went on American Idol, and then afterwards I played for him, and then he joined Queen, and yeah. everybody goes their, their ways. It must be so cool to see his ascend to uh, greatness. I mean, he is absolutely uh, incredible. He is. Yeah, yeah. We got to hang out uh, a little over a year ago and catch up a little bit. So that, that's cool seeing him come so far, you know, from a distance, yeah. you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you are widely known as Madonna's longtime guitarist. I was reading a little bit about how that came to be. Can you take me on that journey? T tell me the story of how you guys uh, met. How much time do we have? <laughs> However much time you want. Uh, well, I, I started giving her guitar lessons. And that's, that's where it started. And about, it was about a month after... Um, it was about a month after she first started taking guitar lessons. She invited me to play on the David Letterman show. And then I would just travel. Like if she went to London, I would go to London and I would just teach her. And then she was going to do a, another tour. She hadn't toured in seven years. So she did, she did the Drown World tour and she asked me to go on tour with her. And I just kind of figured that would be it. Like I would do a tour with Madonna and then see what happens after that. But still, still here. 20 years later now. <laughs> which is what's crazy for me is to have this um this this timeline and, and you think about how fast 20 years goes by when you look back on it yeah yeah but and just you know imagine another 20 years of yeah it'll it'll seem like that yeah of course of course now when she initially started taking guitar lessons with you were you kind of like starstruck because she is obviously really famous and was at the time too no, see, before that, and maybe that was, maybe that played a part in it. Um, but b before I started teaching guitar lessons, I, I just moved to LA from Texas, mm. and I, and I worked at a music store, and I, I quit to start teaching because we did, there were no guitar teachers, or there were guitar teachers, but people would come back in and say like, "Hey, you got anybody else's number?" <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was like, you know what, I'm going to quit working and I'm just going to start teaching. And I'm going to just, it was taking a huge chance. And, um, and so that, that's, that was the, the segue from that. But, but from working, it was at Guitar Center in Hollywood. 
So there were, there were famous people that came in all the time. You, you get used to it. Yeah, man. It wasn't, is, she so cool. was just another person. And although that she's uh, such a, a, a massive star, it, 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 was, it was cool, you know, but it wasn't like if I had gone uh, to Ozzy Osbourne's house or something like that, and I'd be scared out of my mind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw the but, clip on your, I believe it was your Instagram account, uh, where you were on the Dave Letterman show. Yeah, that, so that story and, and that time, it, it, you, you couldn't hear what they were talking about. So that story alone, um, you know, we're, uh, we're there, you know, at uh, Ed Sullivan Theater, and I'm, I'm backstage. And I remember somebody coming in saying like, hey, do you, wanna, uh, do you want somebody to do your makeup? I'm like, what? No, I'm not wearing any makeup. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And, and, then, and th then they were like, okay. And then I was like by myself up in the dressing room. And I was like, well, I, I guess I should go down there. And, 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 and like, I don't remember anyone getting me. But then I go, or maybe they did, I don't know. But then I go down and it was just me and Biff, who was a stage manager you'd always see on the show. And he was like telling me what to do. And then I was thinking like, I should go tune uh, these guitars again because it was, it's so notoriously cold in that theater, like freezing. And I'm like, oh my, oh my God, the guitars have been in this room and now they're going to be in this room and when you do that with a, with a guitar you could you know the, you could go out of tune because of the temperature change so i go and i tune the guitar and i come back and biff's like okay you're 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 out go out there so i just walk out on this stage and there's all these lights you can't see the audience because there's so many lights mm -hmm. and so there's just uh there's a couple of stools and i just go and sit i just go sit down there and Dave and Madonna are talking and I can't, you can't really hear what they're talking about. So when they were, you know, when she came around and when she said something, I saw her look over and I'm just, you know, I wave, but I don't know what they just said. <laughs> they're like, he's such a nerd. You're like, yeah, she could have said something like that. Like, uh, yeah. And I, I, it didn't even seem like you're, you're filming. You know, I felt like when she started playing, there was, there was part of me that was like, you know, just sort of being neurotic about it. Like, like I wonder if, if we should stop and tune again. Are we out of tune a little bit? You know, this, things like that. And then, then we play it and then it's like, okay, that was it. Good night. And I'm like, wait, that, that, was that really it? Was that practice? Are we going to do it again? And then like, it's one of those things like everybody's, uh, as soon as you finish, like Letterman goes out the door, Madonna's out the door. I was, you know, there I am, you know, by myself, like, where do I go now? So, <laughs> so when she asked you to, to go on the Letterman show to, to start, you know, traveling around, although I would presume that that's a very exciting time for you, was, that, was there any hesitancy or was there any pressure at all for you? Um, no. No, no. I mean, you, you have to be confident about what you're doing. Yeah. If there's any pressure or like that or if you get nervous then just just practice more and make sure that when you're performing it's the right thing yeah well you have had a very uh successful uh solo career i i love listening to your music that the, the metal Thanks. on uh, of course on uh spotify now <clears throat> talk to me kind of about that balance because i know you obviously balance going on tour with madonna and then your solo career what does that balance kind of look like well what's cool is like you you uh, you you never get uh, you never get bored with one or the other really because uh, well with Madonna you do every type of style of music really you know there's always something with an acoustic guitar um, there's usually something that's like a rock rock guitar type of thing you know like I mean all the way to us we played part of a Pantera song we, we did the riff for a new level is a is a piece uh, you know for the ending of, of one of her songs there's usually um stuff with a lot of effects sometimes we do like the the clean funky guitar so with that you get to do a little bit of everything with my stuff it's just what i write for being able to play a, a show on my own mm -hmm. my main background like where it all started was was metal 
or rock music, hard rock, heavy metal, anything like that. Mm. And that that's, so I have that kind of music for my solo material and I have acoustic stuff. So it's always a little bit of, uh, you know, you, you have different styles, but it, you, you, it doesn't, um, doesn't sit with just one thing, which I like because I like to just play different, however I feel, whatever the mood is or whatever I want to hear. Cool. So for, for my solo stuff, I, I started out with an acoustic album because I knew that I could recreate that anywhere. Mm -hmm. And part of that was my situation with Adam was where he went on American Idol and he started off, you know, when he took off as a solo artist, I'm like, well, now what am I going to do for a singer? And, um, you know, it's not just somebody that you replace. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm going to start taking vocal lessons and I'm going to start doing my own shows. I'll, I'll learn how to sing. And, and I'd already done that a little bit, but you know, I wanted to start really getting serious with it. So then I put out a, an acoustic album that did really well. And as my shows improve, like you get better set times and more people come out, you have to do something more interesting. So I started playing with a, a drummer and a bass player. And then as I started um, playing solos and stuff like that, that's what people really, you know, that's, that, that got the most comments. Like, man, that's what you need to be doing. And so then I did a heavy album with Fleming Rasmussen, who did the old Metallica albums. And he really pushed me. He's like, look, I like all the stuff that you, that you have of all your songs because I really want to make a heavy album with you. I think that's what you're really, really good at. And so I did that. And I, get, I, I played the album from, from Brian Slagle from Metal Blade. And then he signed me to Metal Blade. So then there, you know, there it is. I'm, I'm, on, a, I'm on a metal label. And the, the last thing that we released, we, we did a, a heavy album and an acoustic album. It's like two different albums from one person on the, on the same day. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I feel like, you know, metal is, is a really good uh, type of music for you. I feel like you'd be such a good country singer, though. Like, you, you have such a great talking voice, and you're from Texas, too. That, that's for later in life. <laughs> I still have to get older, and then I'll do that. Yeah. No, I've actually, because, uh, you know, right now, I'm like, where, where is music going to go? I, I like having that conversation with people. It never, or I won't say never, it rarely stays the same. You know, think about music in 1989 versus music in 1991. Yeah. Or music in 1978 versus 1972, I mean, 1982. Yeah, no. You know, it, it seems like com like a, like a completely different world. Yeah. So I don't, I wouldn't think that things, whatever was happening a year ago or two years ago, is going to be happening next year. Plus, everything we have going on in the world is going to have a huge, huge effect on that. Like I've been doing a lot of sessions. Well, not a lot. But I've been doing some sessions, like recording sessions, and it's been all rap kind of stuff but what's cool about it is there's there's no rules to it right so right. i could be playing there was a session that i did and i was playing it was almost like uh like a like blues guitar like kind of like something bb king would do and that was treated like a sample like uh something dr dre would have done <laughs> you know where they just take one sample of something and loop it but this was more like a little bit more of a blues lick. But then the chords, you know, then, I, then I'll do another pass over the song and I'll play some chords. And the chords were kind of like something that Hall & Oates would use. You know what I mean? Not just standard chords, just a little bit more advanced chords. And then all of that goes over a, a rap song. Huh. That is so, so that, cool. That's really interesting, you know, because it's, it's not something that's ever, that is something that's never happened before. Yeah, yeah. That you, you can say that that type of music. So there's that for for me for like what I've been writing, I've just been trying to write. For a while, I just turned it off, and and I have to do that for a while. People will say, "Are you writing anything?" Like, no, not doing any, not writing anything, not even just teaching and all that. And from one of the things that happens from teaching all these different songs, different styles, songs that people ask you to teach them 
is you get that in your um, your muscle memory, and then you you come up with something kind of related. But I've been trying to like write something every day, every other day. Just maybe it's acoustic, maybe it's this that. I've got heavy stuff. I've got acoustic stuff, and I've got this blue stuff that I've been that's been coming out, and it's you know it, it's different. It's not your typical blues. It's not like classic rock. If you get out of that blues uh, song structure or chord structure, it kind of really just becomes classic rock. Hmm. Yeah. You know, but it, but this is sticking with every you know sticking with those blues progressions, but still doing some different things with them. So that's something I'm interested to see what would happen. I don't know if that means that I would do a blues album and an acoustic album and a heavy album, or maybe one album that has a little bit of all of it because. Why not? I'm super excited to hear uh, this upcoming music because, uh, as oh, you said, it'll be a long time before you hear. It. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be probably at least a couple of years, I would guess. I got you. It's interesting. I was actually on your uh, Facebook page, and some of the musicians that uh, inspire you. We actually have a few musicians in common that we really like: uh, Cat Stevens, uh, Yusuf Islam, uh, Nick yes. Drake, uh, and yeah, there, okay. were, there were a couple others that I. I mean. <laughs> It is insane how much, like, I, I don't sing, I don't really write music, but I write a lot of poetry. So I get a lot of inspiration from guys like Cat Stevens and Nick Drake. I, I saw that, and that's kind of, un I don't hear many Nick Drake fans these days. Nick Drake is one of my biggest influences of, of anyone, of any, of ever. Um, like, Pink Moon is one of the ultimate masterpiece albums that's ever existed. Uh, like that's I, I've been to his I've gone to his his grave like that's what a <laughs> yeah. I drove I was in um, we were, we were in the UK and I I got a taxi and I went all the way out to Tanworth in Arden where his grave is and the taxi driver was like why where are you going why am I taking you to this graveyard <laughs> I wanted to see so, the legend yeah and I ha I um I got this in two thousand uh three i think it was but i, I got a 1965 guild m20 it's the same uh that's what's on the cover of brighter later where he's sitting in the chair and um it, it's I mean, it's not that guitar that that i know of maybe i mean i don't know what happened he traded that guitar in on denmark street in london for the for a d18 and that's what he used on pink moon oh. so i so the story goes, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I got a, I mean, I got a guitar like what he has. Some people say that that guitar was just used for the photo. Anyway, it's a killer guitar. So, <laughs> oh my, that's the guitar. That's the guitar actually. That's at the end of "Like It or Not" from Madonna, the last song on "Confessions on a Dance Floor." Huh. The that one that goes uh, is the part that goes. Um, this is not it, but. Um, <laughs> Huh. That's cool. Wow. And the other musician that I saw we had in common, uh, there's one more, and I'm trying, Jim Croce. Oh, another amazing, yeah, see, some of those acoustic guys, I think that is so just fascinating how they had such a career with doing acoustic music. Mm. Some, of that, some of that Cat Stevens stuff is pretty complicated for, for, uh, for what he's doing with his chords. It's not necessarily just easy G, C, and D kind of chords. Some of that stuff is really tricky. Like America, it's oh. another another band like that. And you know who? There's people always think this is funny when I say this, especially people who know me from metal stuff. John Denver. <laughs> I love John. John Denver. Denver. He was no joke. He was no joke. Um, yeah, John Denver to sing and play the guitar like he did. That's uh, pretty impressive. Absolutely remarkable. I absolutely love John Denver. Well, tell me, although, of course, the best is yet to come, tell me some of those highlights over the course of your career. What are some of the most memorable moments that pop into mind for you? Um, the, the one I always mention, that the, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, just that, that pinch me moment, is Live Earth. That was July 7th, 2007. It was at Wembley Stadium in London. And we were the last act to play and Spinal Tap played in the afternoon 
and they had sent out uh, like a, a memo to all the bands that anyone who played bass to come play Big Bottom with them. And we all could play bass, everybody in Madonna's band. And so we all, uh, so uh, Stuart, who was the keyboard player at the time, he lived in London and he had, he played bass too. That was one of his main instruments. And then, so uh, we all, the, the drummer, the keyboard player, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a bass and we all played with, with Spinal Tap at Wembley Stadium. But as I'm walking across, I'm going out, I walk across the stage, I was gonna walk all the way across the stage for whatever reason, I don't know why. And I just, something goes like, what, what are you doing? Why are you walking all across the stage? And I just turn, I, I got a cable and I plug in now. As I look, I'm in between James Hetfield and Kirk Hammett. <laughs> and, and Rob Trujillo, was, it was there too. So I got to play with Spinal Tap and Metallica. So kill two birds with one stone. That's and I just, I had just the showed the- ball? I had just showed the I had just showed the song to Metallica, because huh. Rob came up and he goes, "Hey, do you know how the song goes?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I showed it to him and he shows it to Kurt, and um, yeah. So that was uh, I just saw Kirk recently too. I, I forgot to bring that up. Um, I sometimes you just forget about these things. The, the Super Bowl was really cool. That goes by so fast, you you don't even. You know, as soon as you realize, wow, I'm, I'm playing the Super Bowl, it's like, oh, okay, that was it. Because I think the whole thing's around 10 minutes, yeah. give or take. And they have somebody to take, like there was somebody to carry my amp, <laughs> you know, and you know, the, 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 that's their job is you take the amp and you put it here. And it's it's such a machine as as soon as the as the second quarter ends, everybody goes to the field and just puts everything into place. You only have whatever the timing is for the commercial breaks. Maybe that's 15. No, no, no. That's like eight or 10 minutes. Or so I don't really remember. And then you go and you play. And so that was cool. That's one of those things where you can, you, you, you look out and, um, yeah, you, know, you, th you think like everybody that I've ever met in my life is probably watching this right now. Yeah. Think about that. Like everybody you've ever met <laughs> is seeing that. Yeah, that would have made so me that, nervous. That's the trip. Um, th there's always, um, what, well, when I went on tour as a solo artist, when I opened for Sebastian Bach, that was a great experience. That was hard. That tour almost killed me it almost killed us literally a couple of times but um sometimes you're risking your life to do this stuff but we were in we rented this vehicle from a friend and uh it it, it didn't work so he would just break down in the middle of the freeway and almost get hit. like we were driving and all of a sudden i'm like i feel like the lights are getting dim and uh and all of a sudden we just lost power and almost got hit by a 18 wheeler on a dark road. Like those kind of, those kind of, you think about those kind of memories too, but uh, great, great shows with Sebastian. And I uh, also went on tour opening for Tony McAlpine. You know, you know who he is? The guitar the name player. Is familiar. And my cousins played with me. They were my drummer and bass player. So that, that was cool to be able to tour with your, with your cousins. Um, you know, as far as those, those are the main things that stick out. Live eight was also really cool. Uh, I got to see Pink Floyd play. Um, you know, that, and that was the last time they ever played together, huh. which was, a that, that was cool. Um, and at, after the show, I was standing around backstage and it was at Hyde Park and we were staying across the street. And everybody had said, don't, don't leave by yourself. Don't walk through the park at night. Wait for some, so I was going to wait for some of the crew to walk with me. And I had just been talking to Roger Waters and his manager, because we had mutual people that we knew. And they actually, his manager said, oh, I've been, I was trying to find you. Uh, I was trying to find your information. We, we were actually looking for a guitar player 
And you had told, I had told him a couple of years before, like, well, hey, if you ever need a guitar player, hit me up. And he goes, I needed a guitar player. And you came to mind, but I didn't know how to find you. I was like, oh, great. So then um, as I'm standing there, uh, David Gilmore comes to Roger Waters and introduces him to his son. And he's like, oh, this, you know, this is my son. He's like, oh, very nice to meet you. And then they're like, well, this is great. And I think everybody else, they, had, they, they were with their wives. And they're like, all right, well, we're going to go to dinner. You want to come with us? And Roger Waters was just like, no. Uh, see, see you later. And then they all went their own, their separate ways. And I was like, I wish I had a camera. Like, hey, Pink Floyd, can we get a picture real quick? You know, those kind of things, those sort of stories that you you would never imagine really happening. Yeah. You know, there, for me, so I, I started interviewing athletes when I was 11 years old. I started interviewing musicians maybe at um, 13 or 14 uh, when I published my second book. So I was getting interviews with Foreigner uh, and all these legendary bands, Don Felder from the Eagles, all these people. And when they would pass through St. Louis, I would always want to do an in-person interview and, you know, obviously get a picture. Uh, and I can't, I think it may have been here at the Hollywood Amphitheater, the Eagles and Foreigner were coming together and Styx as well, who I'd also got to interview. Uh, and I had interviewed the guy from Foreigner. I, I forgot what instrument he played. Um, but I had no idea that he would remember me. I, of course, I was a young kid. Not many kids were interviewing these bands at the time. But he walked by me and I didn't even say it. I just sat there. He's like, Matthew Perlman, we talked on the phone, didn't we? I'm like, like that, there, and then right after that, Mick Jones walked by, and then I got interviewed him in person. So that's just one. That, that, those are just such cool experiences, man. Yeah, there's 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 people like that who could. I mean, it's 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 not uncommon, I think, to remember people. There are certain people who are like like they say Bono from U2, really will like remember everything about, and I've heard that about Bill Clinton too. <laughs> really. Yeah, I've heard those, like, that people, that they'll remember every little, that's kind of how their brain works and partially how they've gotten where they've gotten. Oh, that is super freaking cool. Well, Monty, obviously with, with COVID and all that, things are pretty weird. The future is kind of uncertain at this time. But tell me those primary goals for the remainder of the year, 2021, uh, anything like that? Primary goals, just staying healthy, taking my vitamins, um, you never hear anybody talk about that on the news, which is kind of weird, you know, like no one, everybody's like, Oh, when's there going to be a vaccine? And when's there going to be this? Like no one says, Hey, everybody, maybe it's time to, you know, go on your diet, maybe takes your vitamins and nobody's, uh, nobody, you don't, you don't hear any doctors on TV talking about that, but for me, you know, I'm teaching a lot. Like, uh, the, so the last Madonna tour, it technically got canceled yeah. because we, I mean, we still had some shows to do and we played a show and right before we went on, they had said, well, the, the, uh, the French government, we're in Paris and the French government is uh, banned any gatherings of over a thousand people. And then we're playing theaters, you know, they'd only hold maybe 2000 people. And so you think like, well, what would we do two shows? We like play in front of a thousand people and then the other thousand people have to come. How is that going to work? Um, is everything going to be okay in a couple of days? And it was uh, a day, uh, maybe it was the next day or the day after we got, we all got emails from our tour manager saying that, you know, that was it. You already played your last show. I'm working on getting you flights to come back. And, so I came back to Los Angeles and uh, after, and I felt, I didn't, I felt, I mean, I was, we, this had been going on. So we were all taking the precautions, uh, you know, as, as it was. Um, but I, I, like, I remember I went to the Louvre with some friends and there's someone spraying disinfectant after each person on the, um, on the escalator. And I was like, okay, that, that's good. Felt fine in, in, in Paris. I had a layover in San Francisco. There's like hair and crumbs and dirt in the trays. I was like, you know for sure this hasn't been cleaned. And with everything going on, like see, like this already, you know, it's the middle of March and people haven't been taking care of this. And 
so that was uh, it was such a difference getting back to the states but then as soon so i got a hotel room right after i landed and as soon as i turned on the tv it's like shutting off all travel from the eu so I, we barely made it back i think you could still get back you know from, you know if you're a citizen so um but for you know teaching online has been just in incredible it's like what a what a blessing to be able to teach online and still be able to to do something so that's uh that's been great so for me i'm just teaching a lot and i'll write a little bit i don't I don't really make plans. I stopped making plans because I always have to change them. Yeah. And then it takes so much time to change your plans. Like if somebody, like if you were to say, hey, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing next week? I'm going to be in LA. I'll just be like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, do you want to make some plans? No. <laughs> Ask me that day because if something does come up, if some, someone says, hey, can you, you know, can we do a lesson? you know, could you teach me something today? Then, uh, then I got to cancel or whatever, if I have to cancel my plans. Huh. Interesting. That's a, that's a cool way of living. I kind of don't mind in, in a weird, bizarre, funny way. Like I kind of don't mind being, you know, having to stay at home. Yeah. I, I mean, you know what, for me, I, I just graduated with my undergrad degree uh, and I'm starting grad school now online, uh, obviously here in St. Louis. But to me, although this these are very dark times this is the most quality time i've been able to spend with my family by far i mean so I'm, yeah. I'm not taking this for granted right and as you know as you think about what you just said dark times yes they are but there could be you know if you think positive i like to think positive that hopefully some really great things maybe uh i mean me personally i don't think there's any way i would get a vaccine anyway um I'm not anti-vaccine for it, vaccine. I just know that I've, I've had like five. I, when I was a kid, there was like four or five you got. That was it. Now there's like 20 as soon as you're born. No. And I got the flu shot one time and I thought I was going to die. I, that was just one of the sickest moments I've ever had. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting the flu shot again. And that's for sure. And then again, you know, it's vitamins and healthy diet somewhat when you can. But um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like not, not too different from being on tour because, uh, you're, you're either in your hotel room, you know, just by yourself or you're in your dressing room with just a couple of people by yourself. And then you, you go out and usually you're by yourself. You go eat at a restaurant, you're by yourself. That's what it's really like on tour. And <clears throat> so it's, uh, ho hopefully some, some, there's some good things. Maybe they're working on a vaccine and they discover a vaccine for cancer or something, you know, or so maybe hopefully something good comes out of it all. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Well, one thing that's good is I met you, Monty. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to leave the floor to you. How can people find you on social media? Uh, anything like that? It's at Monty Pittman anywhere, you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, if you go on YouTube, we've got videos out. There's some live performance stuff out. One thing that I've been wanting to do, but I but I haven't had the time because I've been teaching so much, is take some older videos of me. Like, because when we went on tour with Sebastian Bach, you know, every show was filmed. So maybe getting some things and putting those up. Um, but that, you know, I have a website, montypittman.com. If you go to metalblade.com slash Monty Pittman, you'll, you'll find uh, all the albums there. Anywhere you listen to music, you'll find me. Um, so that's it. Yeah, if, if, you're, if, if you're looking for lessons online just like this, it's my uh, emails lessons at montypittman.com. Cool, cool. And, that, and that's it. Um, I've done a couple of quarantine jams with my friend Corey D. Williams. Hmm. he's billy d williams son huh. and uh he was uh he was in he's in return of the jedi on on jabba's uh sail barge <laughs> and he has this funk project and i started playing guitar for some of his stuff so but other than that that's that's all i've really been doing you know it'd be a really cool uh, uh guitar session you being such a remarkable guitarist and me being such a basic guitarist i bet we can produce a pretty cool sound 